Welcome back to Gadget Class. In this video I'm going to go over some of the key principles and techniques to make sure you're properly using your digital caliper or your digital micrometer to make sure you're getting the most accurate measurement possible every single time. Now there's uh, five key factors that I'm going to go over here and I'll just summarize them right in the beginning here. The first most important factor is having a quality measuring instrument. If you're not starting out with a quality measuring instrument, your measurements are not going to be quality measurements. So here I've got an eye gauging absolute origin origin cal digital caliper and an eye gauging uh, digital micrometer. It's an IP54 full vernier scale digital micrometer. So both of these are quality measuring instruments. So the second most important factor is going to be clean faces. The third most important factor is going to be your zero point. Um, the fourth most important factor is going to be the consistency and point of force. And then the fifth most important factor is going to be user technique and uh, user error. So let's jump right into it. Second most important factor is cleaning your measuring faces. With a digital micrometer like this one from eye gauging, you're actually measuring down to the half of a ten thousandths or point zero 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 five. That's the hundred thousandths decimal place. So when you're measuring something down that far, any amount of oil, residue, anything on the measuring surface between the anvil and the spindle, or even between the anvil, the object you're measuring, and the spindle, it's going to throw your measurement off. So you need to make sure both your measuring faces are clean and the object you're measuring is 100% clean to get an accurate reading every single time. Now that's not quite as vital um, down to that degree on a digital caliper because you're only measuring down to the thousands. But still, you want to make sure you've got clean faces and a clean measuring object um, to make sure you're getting the most accurate measurement possible. Now, to do that, all we do is take some isopropyl alcohol and a sheet of uh, plain white copy paper. I like copy paper because uh, I always have it and it uh, pretty much all paper is lint free. Now you get some people that like to use uh, their shirt or a lint free towel but when, when it comes down to it um, anything that's kind of a cloth or uh, a soft paper product is uh, has a potential to have lint whereas paper um, is pretty much 100% lint free every single time. So you're going to take your paper and your alcohol and you're just going to put a couple drops onto the paper. You don't need much, just enough so that it impregnates both sides of the paper, like so. Now let's start with the digital caliper. This is really easy. All you're going to do is clamp down onto the wet surface and slide it off. It's really simple. Do that three or four times. And then come over here to the dry area and do it again. That's all you need to do to make sure your cleaning faces are clean. If you're going to be doing uh, internal measuring, you can just uh, slide the jaws over the wet and the dry areas like you're sharpening a knife. Pretty simple. So that's the digital caliper. For the micrometer, uh, it takes a little bit more finesse. First thing you need to know is how to properly hold a micrometer. You want to stick either one or two fingers down in the, the cavity of the body there. Um, on this one, I like to use just my pinky. That gives me my thumb and forefinger way out here to control the thimble, like so. So, that's the way you're going to hold it. You can actually hold it in any direction using your pinky to hold it for you. So you're going to hold it like that, like so. And you're just going to stick your piece of paper in between uh, the measuring face of the anvil and the spindle there. And you're just going to give it a slight amount of tension. You don't want to get it to the point where it can't move, you just want enough force that you're getting a good solid engagement with the paper. Once you're done there, come over here to the dry area and do the same thing. This will get any remaining alcohol residue off. And that's it. So now we have uh, clean measuring faces and we're right at zero. Um, any little bit of anything on there is going to throw your measurements off by a half of a ten thousandths or more. Uh, Half of a ten thousandths is such a small amount of anything that uh, it's not going to take much to throw your measurements off by that amount of, uh, of measurement. And that brings us to our next factor, which is your zero point. Zero point is going to be the 
third most important factor. If you're not starting at zero or your zero is bouncing around all over the place, um, you're not going to have a good measurement out on your measuring object because you're, you know, if you're off here, you're off out here. So if you've cleaned these faces and your your zero your zero is still jumping around, you've set your origin point, either your absolute or your your new zero val value on a caliper or your zero value on your micrometer, and you're still getting an inaccurate zero reading or it's it's bouncing around, make sure you replace that battery. Um, a lot of people overlook that. They think that as long as their display is nice and bright, um, their battery is good. That's not the case. Um, if you've getting a weird behavior of any kind, replace your battery. That's why I like the eye gauging products. They use the CR2032 battery. Uh, it's kind of a more common battery, lasts a long time, and it's easy to get. Um, so if you have any question at all, replace that battery. So clean faces, good battery, good zero. Zero is vital. That's especially true on a digital micrometer. Because you're dealing with such a small amount of measurement, um, if you're not starting at zero, your measurements are going to be off by whatever is in between the measuring surfaces there. So zero on a micrometer becomes um, 10 thousandths more important than it is on a, on a digital caliper. Not that it's just as important on both, um, it just is a lot easier to see how far off your zero can get um, on a digital micrometer. So you always want to start from zero. So on a, on a manual micrometer, um, that includes making sure you're at a zero point there. And you can see I'm actually slightly off there. So I need to get out my spanner wrench and adjust uh, adjust that a little bit. Um, but with a digital micrometer, they kind of took that part out of the equation. There's no more uh, adding up uh, your digits and uh, using your spanner wrench to make sure you get a zero. Um, your zero is set over here. If it's off, all you do is reset zero and you can measure it wherever you want. For that reason, you can actually get a less expensive uh, digital micrometer that doesn't even have the vernier scale on there because you're actually going to be relying on this a lot more anyways. You can actually get down to the half of a half of a ten thousandths which you can't do um, on the vernier scale there. So um, you got a finer degree of measurement with the digital scale. So that's one reason to go digital instead of uh, manual on a micrometer. So um, We've got uh, clean measuring faces. We've got a good zero. Our fourth most important factor is the consistency and the point of force applied uh, between the measuring faces and the measuring object. You always want to have a consistent point and pressure of force. So on a micrometer, they made that really simple. Your consistent point of force comes from the fact that the thimble stops and starts ratcheting when it gets to its desired or set a uh, point of force. So you're gonna to get to a certain point and it's just gonna stop turning. That's, that's its set point of force to get an accurate measurement every single time. And as far as point of force, because it's the, the spindle that's uh, applying the force, um, you cannot Im impart the wrong point of force with a, a micrometer because it's always being applied through the spindle down to the object and to the anvil. Um, so consistency in the point of force and the amount of force is easy with a micrometer, especially with the newer ones that have uh, the friction or the ratchet stop. Now, when it comes to a digital caliper, there's a little bit more of a user feel involved. Um, that's what this thumb wheel is for. You always want to use. Uh, you always want to be moving the, the the measuring body with the thumb wheel. That is not only your point of movement, but it is also your consistent point of force. If you're always applying your force with that thumb wheel, you're going to have a consistent point of force through the measuring faces and through the measuring object. So you're always going to apply force from that fulcrum point. Now, as far as consistency of force, that's where the user feel comes into play. Um, you want to be applying a gentle, firm pressure. Come out here to zero and uh, just give it a gentle force. That same amount of force is the amount of force you're going to be using when you're finding the measurement of an object. It's the same amount of force, checking zero or the object. If there needs to be uh, adjustments or it's not fully flat on the surface, you need to either be moving the object itself or the body of the caliper to get a good accurate measurement. You're not using the thumb wheel to clamp it down. Just like on a 
digital or a micrometer, you're not using um, the wheel to clamp it down like a C-clamp. It's got a set amount of force that you're supposed to imply, and the same is true with the caliper, except you become the deciding factor in how much force you're applying. So it's just, just a nice, gentle, firm pressure. Same amount of pressure, you're going to come out here to zero to find zero. Just a nice, firm pressure. Any micro adjustments you need to make, you need to make them in either the object or the body of the caliper. A good way to demonstrate that is going to be on a, a big, large, flat object like this. It doesn't take much uh, horizontal movement to throw the measurement off. So to get a good accurate measurement, I'm applying a, a good amount of force here, but any adjustments that need to be made, I'm actually going to make them in the elevation or the level or angle of the caliper itself, not by clamping down on the thumb wheel. That can actually damage your digital caliper and throw your measurements off because you're going to be applying, applying a lot more torque in between the measuring draws. Whereas if you use uh, the object itself or the body of the caliper to get that consistent force, then uh, you know you're getting a good measurement. And that leads us to uh, the last most important factor, and that is user technique or user error. Repeatability starts with a good quality measuring instrument and ends with a good quality measuring person. <laughs> Repeatability kind of comes down to your ability to kind of know the feel of your measuring instrument and know the feel of a good solid engagement with your object and how to get a good solid engagement without um, putting unneeded strain on your, your measuring device uh, or causing deflection in the object itself. So, um, to get a good... Uh, Consistent measurement every single time. You need to be consistent in your force applied through the thumb wheel and consistent in your um, use of the caliper itself. As long as you're using it uh, consistently every time, you can get an accurate reading every single time. So there's a little bit more play involved with a, a digital caliper than there is with a micrometer. Um, but that last little bit of user uh, user input is kind of the most uh, most important factor um, in the long run. Once you've got all the other stuff down, it comes to your use and practice with the device you're measuring with. Um, it's a little bit simpler with a a micrometer because the the point and uh, amount of force is set pretty much by the device itself. Um, it all comes down to user technique, how you're holding it, how you're holding the angle of the measuring instrument, and how you're holding the angle of the object. So on a, on a flat object like this feeler gauge here, it's pretty easy to get a good solid flat engagement. Um, there's no question about it. You know, it gets to a point, it stops, and that's your measurement. And it is a 32 thousandths feeler gauge, so we're right on there. Um, when it comes to measuring uh, objects that are slightly off shape, like uh, the thickness of a pipe or something that's rounded or has a, a convex or concave shape to it, and you're using something like the, the ball adapter on your micrometer, basically this just gives you a round point um, to measure from. Um, measuring something round or of a weird shape, uh, it becomes that much more important to know and understand um, how you're measuring with your device. So when you're using the adapter, you're just going to come out here, set your increment mode, and uh, now we're measuring an increment from the size of the ball there. And it's the same thing. You just come out here, measure your object, and uh, there we go. So knowing how to properly use, hold, and uh, measure with your measuring instrument is the kind of like the, the final frontier in getting an accurate measurement. You need to have a good feel for your measuring device, and you need to know how to use it and how to use it correctly to get the most accurate measurement possible. And that just comes with practice and feel. It's not that big of a deal, um, but if you're a newbie, um, that's just something you want to get the hang of. Once you've chosen a good measuring instrument, just start using it. Start making object uh, measurements. Start, you know, measuring things that are you know, like maybe slightly, slightly round or slightly uh, of a different shape. Um, get the hang of 
how to get a good flat engagement with your measuring object and uh, how to get a, a good quality measurement. Um, one last thing to note on a digital caliper, you always want to make sure you're measuring as close as possible to the ruling body. Um, you don't want to be measuring out here at the jaws. Um, that's not why they put those little little bevels there. That's so you can get into like measuring threads and stuff. Ideally, you want to measure everything as close as possible to the measuring body. So if it's something round, you want to make sure you're engaging the closest point of the jaws there um, while being as close as possible to the ruling body itself. So generally, you can stick your object straight up onto the ruler there and then measure it. So now we're engaging both the closest point on the jaws and it's as far possible in between the jaws uh, as possible. That's important because the further out you get from the ruling body, the more torque is applied in a twisting manner uh, against the measuring body. So your, your measurements are often going to be slightly off between full face measurement and measurement out here at the, the tip. So we got a different measurement there. That's because there's enough force implied on the tip here against the measuring body that it's it's throwing our measurements off by that half a thousandths. So on a caliper, make sure you're measuring as close as possible to the ruling body. So that's it for uh, techniques and measurement with a digital caliper and a digital micrometer. Um, one thing I, I failed to mention is maybe room temperature. Um, when you're measuring down to a half of a ten thousandths, the temperature of the measuring object actually comes into play. Um, you know, heat expands, uh, cold shrinks. So if you've got this stored in a cold, cold place and you bring it out into room temperature and then make a measurement with it, your measurement is not going to be right. You need to be storing this at uh, room temperature or maybe just slightly below room temperature. You need to make sure that when you're measuring, you're measuring at room temperature. Otherwise, your measurement is going to change from when you first pull it out of cold storage to when you're actually measuring at room temperature. So make sure you uh, keep these in a nice, uh, cool, or room temperature place. And then the final step is uh, you want to turn it off and store it properly. I always want to put it in uh, back in its case. The case protects it from dust and keeps it uh, keeps it nice and clean. A clean instrument and a care forward instrument is going to give you a uh, a clean and careful measurement. So you want to be you want to be good to your measuring instruments so that you get the most accurate measurement possible. So I'm going to turn it off, put it in its case, and I'm going to store them in a nice protected place as close to room temperature as possible. So that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you watch all the other videos in the Digital Caliper Roundup series and uh, the full unboxing and review of the the two digital micrometers I have. Uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.